I'm Hunter. Hunter. Welcome to DCTV. All right, let's take the sports. With Luke and Carter. Uh, all right, Brody. So, what caused you guys to get the victory against Holy Family? Um, we put up a lot of points on offense. Carter Nelson had a couple touchdowns in there. That was pretty sweet. So did uh, Blake Johnson getting some good runs in there, and our defense held steady, holding them to 13 points only. And one of their touchdowns was just at the tail end of the game there. So, yeah. All right, what do us fans have to look forward to this upcoming game this week? Um, it's a big rivalry against Litchfield, who no one really likes Litchfield, so it'll be fun to get out there and get excited to play a team that's just down the road. That It'll be a pretty good game. They have a pretty good team. We have a pretty good team. What are you guys going to have to do to win? We're probably going to have to play our best game of the season so far and just try and minimize mistakes and do what we do best. There you have it, Captain Brody Schmidt. They're gonna win too. So how's cross country going? Pretty good. It's really fun and the team is doing great this year. How did your last meet go? Pretty good. Are there any personal records or anything? <laughs> yeah, I shaved five minutes off my time last week. <laughs> oh my God. Five minutes? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm here with Elena, Juliana, and I'm Carter. So, how did your latest games go? We had a tough loss on Monday night against Holy Family, but we got a lot to improve on, and hopefully the end of the season goes well. Who are your upcoming opponents? We have a game away on Thursday against New London, and then on Saturday we have a home tournament. Nice. So, what do you need to do to get better? Um, just got a few things, some new team stuff, and hopefully we can come out with a few wins in the next few weeks. Great. Let's see some super fan out there for those games too. Woo! Yeah. They cut the tunes! Yeah, Spokane okay, no, Athletics just got a new weight room. Let's go check it out. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. I'd like to thank you for coming to the Charger Weight Room, aka the Iron Playground. Let's take it out to Sarah, Anna, and Jules as they talk about the new weight room. So, Mr. Tennyson, how did we get the idea for the new weight room? Well, I think it started uh, several years ago when uh, we saw that open space right next to our weight room and thought it would be a good idea to add on some extra space to that. Someone's on the bed. Hey! Can you explain some of the 
the new features or elements we have here? Definitely, the best new element is the whole, everybody gets to stay in the area the whole entire time. So we have 12 stations or 12 platforms, and in those platforms we can hold up to probably about five lifters. that are excellent in there is the new cardio equipment that we have. Um, the concept of it is to use it as far as a training, like um, injury prevention. If an athlete is injured, um, they're able to use that equipment and they're able to use our new training room. You may have seen new faces here at DC. Let's go meet all the new foreign exchange students. We spoke with some of the DCHS foreign exchange students. Here's what they have to say. How many years of school do you have left after you go home? Uh, my year here doesn't count, so I actually have two years left because I have to do this year again. One year? Uh, it's two years. When I arrive in Brazil, I just go direct to college. Two more years? Where do you hope to visit before you go home? I think the Hall of America. The Mall of America would be great. Uh, in Minnesota, spend more time in the Mall of America. And U.S., Hawaii would be awesome. Mall of America. What is different from your hometown here? Everything. The school, um, the car. Because uh, in Spain, you can drive with 18 and here with 16. A lot of things are different, but especially like uh, people here drive everywhere and they're kind of dependent on the car. Um, I'm not very used to cars because I kind of back home in Sweden. Uh, I take the subway everywhere. <laughs> uh, I live in Munich and that's a really big city, so I think that's one of the biggest differences. What is your favorite food? Um, I think so far it's Lappy Joe's. Um, I have to say Pizza. Burgers. Burgers. Yeah. Do you like it here so far? Yeah. Yeah? You like it? Yeah, I do. It's different, and but I like new experiences. Yes, of course. I do. Yeah, I'm liking it. Yeah, it's awesome. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Troubles are all the same. You wanna be where everybody knows your name. This year on DC TV, we're introducing a new random episode of the week. Let's send it off to Billy Seafelt as he shows us some of his new basketball tricks. Last summer, a few lucky students got the chance to go to Guatemala. Let's take it off to Adrian, Alex, and Cody as they talk about the trip. Many students had the opportunity to go all over the world this summer. This select few people had the opportunity to go to Guatemala with two instructors over the summer. Here is what they had to say. What is one of your favorite things you did in Guatemala? Uh, one of my favorite things is we visited this lake called Lake Atitlan, and National Geographic called it the most beautiful lake in the world, so it was kind of a nice experience to go there. We went and volunteered at an old folks home for two days, and we volunteered at uh, 
children's school for two days too. And we just kind of hung out with them and played stuff. And we did lots of tourism, like touring little villages all around where we stayed and stuff. What is one thing you did at like the nursing homes? Uh, we played games and like cards and like the Spanish version of bingo. My favorite activity was definitely lunchtime with the family. We'd go home for lunch for about an hour and a half. So for lunchtime, my host mom had a bunch of people come over that actually are some of my friends from that I met before. Um, and so our table had 10 people around it. It was her, her daughter, um, and her, her baby in her tummy, uh, Spunky. And then there was uh, my friend Brian and Arturo, and Megan Johnson was with me, and then a couple other girls or young women from the United States that were staying in our house. So there was 10 of us. Um, it was very eventful, a lot of jokes and a lot of brotherly, sisterly love going on, and it was pretty great. What are the, some of the other activities you've done in Guatemala? Um, studying one-on-one -on -one with many of the professors that were there. They were very well educated. They had a great knowledge of Spanish. And we hiked two Dorban volcanoes. Uh, when we went to San Pedro, we went like cliff jumping off this deck thing. It was only like 21 feet above the water. And it was super legit. It hurt to jump up, but. On that trip, our schedule was Monday through Friday. We had five hours of class in the morning. So we would get to school at 8 and have class till 1. After that, the kids would go home for lunch, 5 or 2. And then in the, in the afternoons, we had activities. So every Tuesday and Thursday, we volunteered. The first week, we were at a nursing home. And the second week, we were at a school outside of the city uh, doing fight classes with them, teaching them how to, to do the chicken dance and playing tag and things like that. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday were days for cultural activities and sightseeing. So we visited many old churches. We visited um, cemeteries, we got to make chocolate, things like that, cultural activities. And then on the weekends, we were able to do longer trips. So we traveled places that took maybe an hour or two to go to. Uh, we also went to the lake one weekend and got to climb a volcano. Some of us got to climb a volcano and hang out uh, in more tropical climate, um, eat very different foods, drink coffee on Sunday morning. Um, and those are the activities we did. What is one thing you won't forget about going on the trip to Guatemala? Well, actually, my professor was a, he was a really good photographer. He actually did pictures for National Geographic. So while I was there, we actually uh, took photos for models that were there. Um, well, Wyatt Peterson sprained my ankle. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was there like, the whole time. Well, it was very memorable. It was the first trip I took with students. Um, I went before as a college student and I went by myself uh, in 2014, the summer of 2014. This trip, I actually was able to buy a trahi tipico, which is traditional dress that Mayan women wear. And Mayan, when, Mayan men do too, but not as much. Would you ever go back? Oh, heck yeah, I would. I'd go back. Absolutely. My parents are afraid one day I'll only buy a one-way ticket um, down there, which might happen. Um, but this next summer, I plan to go there if I can uh, with grad school. I plan to go there for a couple weeks. Um, and then in the 2017, the fall of 2017, we hope to bring uh, some of the teachers here for a cultural exchange for a couple weeks. And then the following summer, in 2018, we're going to take another group of students down to Guatemala if it passes the school board. So yes, we plan to visit there like almost every year, have people come and do this exchange and create this program that is, uh, feeds into itself and, and is very supportive of this cultural exchange. If you feel you're sinking, I will jump right over into cold, cold water for you. And all time may take us into different places, I will still be patient with you.